I'm starting a new series to teach Spring Boot by building a URL shortener application. Most likely you know what a URL shortener application is. You can take a long URL and then convert into a short URL. And if anybody access that short URL, you will redirect the user to long URL. It's a very simple application, but we can learn a lot while building this application. In this application, we are going to use Spring Boot uh, for building our web application and Spring Security for uh, implementing security. And then we can use either JDBC Client or Spring Data JPA. I prefer to start with JDBC Client. Later, maybe we can see if we can replace the persistence layer with Spring Data JPA. And then we are going to use PostgreSQL as our database, Flyway for database migrations, and Timeleaf uh, for view templates, Bootstrap CSS. So, these are all the things that we are going to use while building our URL Sharner application. Then you might think it is, isn't it too simple to learn anything uh, real? But if you take a look at what are all the things we can learn from this application, these are all the features you might be learning for building any other application. Most of the things are going to be useful for building any other application. Let's take a look at it. So in this application, we are going to build a web application and we will learn how to fetch data from database and display it on UI. And also we'll learn how to create a form and then let the user fill in the form and then submit it. If there are any errors, you redisplay the form with errors and then finally handle the form submission. Also, if uh, there are any global errors, you might want to show some error pages also. So we are, we are going to learn all that. And then when it comes to talking to the database, most of the applications perform uh, CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete operations. We are going to uh, perform all those CRUD operations in our application too. And also it is a highly recommended practice to use some uh, database migration tool like uh, Flyway or Liquibase. So in this application, we are going to use Flyway. And also, Using pagination is a highly recommended thing. Like uh, if there are a million records in your database, you don't want to pull all the data and then display it in, at once. So we most likely need to use some kind of a pagination technique where you show only a subset of the data. And in this application, we are going to implement that pagination. And then uh, when we are using uh, Spring Data JPA, there is a concept called open session in view filter and uh, handling some common errors like a lazy loading exceptions. So we are going to learn that as well. And finally, we will secure our application with Spring Security. We are going to secure some URLs so that only authenticated users can access them. So we are going to implement both login and user registration. And also we are going to implement role-based uh, access controls, which is like some pages are only um, available for uh, users with a role admin. Some are available for uh, only users with a, a role user. And some pages are available for everyone, even authenticated users. And also sometimes you need to get the current logged in user information. So these are the things that you most likely do in any other application, be it a URL shortener, a blog, or a shopping cart, any other things. So I intentionally keep the business logic low so that we can focus on uh, learning Spring Boot concepts. So these are all the uh, features that we are going to learn while building our uh, URL shortener application. And then there is a lot of uh, scope for extending our application with various other features as well. So if you want to build a REST API instead of a web application, you can take all the core uh, layer and then replace the web application part like a uh, web controllers. You can build a REST controllers. So you can uh, reuse most of the logic and also uh, maybe we can use Spring Data JPA or if you don't like to use uh, Spring Data JPA, maybe you can switch the persistence layer with uh, JDBC client or Juke, any other technology. And also we can use caching like uh, people use short URLs and then redirect to original URL. So it's a good candidate for implementing caching also. And also you can uh, implement structured logging and instead of uh, writing our own security, maybe we can use uh, key clock and then leverage the uh, security features. 
And also, uh, we can implement file upload and download. For example, uh, maybe we can provide this provision for admin users where they can upload a CSV file uh, with all the uh, long URLs and then automatically import them. Or you can download the existing entire uh, URLs by filtering and whatnot. So, uh, and also HTMX. So in our uh, UI, there could be some places where we can leverage HTMX based uh, Ajaxified features uh, instead of going full blown uh, React or Angular route. So that's also uh, something we can try it out. So even though URL shortener application is a small application, there is a lot of uh, scope for us to implement and then extend whenever we want to learn some new feature on top of it. Here is a gist of how our URL shortener application is going to look like. In the home page, when user is not yet authenticated, this is how the home page looks like. In this home page, we'll have a form where user can enter any long URL and then they can uh, shorten the URL. And below, you can see all the public uh, shorten URLs in this table format. You can see when, uh, what is the short URL and what is the original URL and when it is created and when it's going to get expired. So when a guest a user creates a, a short URL, by default, we are going to expire it in 30 days. So it's going to show that when it's going to expire. And if the user is logged in, we'll show a couple of more fields in this form. In addition to the URL, we'll also uh, take how many days uh, it's going to expire in. And also we can ask, uh, is it a public URL or a private URL? In this table, we are going to show only the public URL. So this is the home page. Now, once the user logged in, they can click on my URLs link where they are going to see only the URLs they created. They, in a sense, the current logged in user. So here, if I log in and click on my URLs link, here I can see in a tabular format all the URLs that I have created, of course, with pagination. And here I can see uh, whether it is a public uh, URL or private URL and when it's going to get expired. So this is another uh, feature that is only available for logged in user. And finally, if the logged in user is a admin, they can access admin dashboard link in which we're going to see all the shorten URLs. I mean, uh, URLs created by all the users, not just the current logged in user, but all the URLs created by all the users. So here uh, you can see which user created so on. So URL, is it a public URL or a private URL? So all the information. And here also uh, probably we can implement, uh, select uh, some of the features and then uh, delete them. Or maybe we don't need this for admins and let the users delete if they don't want it. So uh, this is an optional feature that uh, we can implement or we can leave it as an exercise because we are going to implement the similar feature in this screen. So these are the features. In addition to that, obviously we'll have a login screen and we'll have a user registration. And in this page, we are going to implement validations. In this case, all email, password, name, all of them are mandatory fields. So if user doesn't provide any of these fields, we should show the error message. And uh, of course, basic login form, and we are going to use uh, Spring Security for implementing this login. So this is how our application is going to look like. What are the prerequisites to follow along this course? You need to know Java, and you need to have basic familiarity with Maven build tool. We are going to use Maven while building this application. And I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA for uh, as IDE. And uh, there is nothing completely depending on IntelliJ IDEA features or anything like that. But throughout this course, I'm going to demonstrate various uh, shortcuts or uh, IDE features that can help you to be more productive. So I recommend you to follow along by using IntelliJ IDEA. So these are the prerequisites and you should be able to follow on this course and uh, learn how to build a web application using Spring Boot. See you in the next section.